back on the double neck guitar here today. It's been sitting in the shop here for several days and I haven't really done anything. I've been thinking about it, you know, because sometimes that's your best solution to figuring out a problem. You give it a lot of thought and you think about all the different options and, and rather than just jumping in too soon, well, that's what I've been doing. I've been talking to different places about the pickups. You know, there was a lot of suggestions made from my first video, and I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, some of them I kind of wrote off and thought, nah, I probably wouldn't do that, you know. But then again, I didn't really write off anything. I just kind of keep an open mind about it. But uh, so it turns out uh, that one of the suggestions was to talk to K&K &K Sound, and, and I have talked to them. I first started off, to be honest with you, talking to uh, the LR Bags people uh, because I do deal with their pickups and sell those pickups here in my shop. But I got to be honest, they weren't too interested in helping me or talking to me about this because their pickups are encapsulated, meaning that you know it's one unit and they don't want to break that capsule open and let you start monkeying with it. And they said that will void the warranty if you do anything like that. So kind of wrote off LR bags right off the front and uh, then I started looking at all different kinds of options and uh, the Tonewood amp is still on the table. I haven't heard back from them yet. Uh, they weren't too accommodating in my opinion because I couldn't find a phone number for them on their website. They just had a you know an email open a ticket thing. So I did that, told them what I was trying to do. I haven't heard back from them yet. So then I moved on to the K&K sound people and uh, that was kind of a popular suggestion at least they're willing to talk to you and they're willing to sell you individual components so it looks like this may be the way we're going to go i looked up on the uh you know web and found this drawing of a of two uh, piezo uh pickups uh and uh you know with a three-way switch and a mono jack and that's more or less what we're talking about here. We're talking about, you know, picking up one side or the other side with a three-way switch and then coming out to a jack. So that makes the most sense to me is to, is to maybe buy the K&K uh, pickups. And they said they would sell the pickups individually for me. So I could buy two pickups, one jack, and some wiring. And uh, they would also make some suggestions on where to place the pickups and things if I sent them pictures uh, of the inside of the guitar and the outside of the guitar, which I plan to do. So that's where we're headed right now. That's the current status of the thing. <laughs> so this is going to be a slower process than I'm used to doing. I usually just jump through these things, but uh, in this particular case, I don't want to just jump through it. I have a streamwinder made for this drill, uh, you know, commercially, but it's such a big head on it that it hits these other deals. So I just made this little thing up here a long time ago, actually, and then I, I basically just want to get the tension off of all these strings. Okay, we're going to go inside the guitar now. I've got my little camera here. By the way, I painted a little white spot there on there so I can tell which side goes up. I just thought that might be helpful for somebody that uses these things. And anyway, um, so we're going to take a trip down inside here. First thing we're going to look at is the label. So here is the label. And now we move from the label, we're looking at the six string side of the uh, inside of the guitar and there's the 12 string. You can see there's ladder braces on either side. It's one continuous bridge pad. There's the 12 string again. Uh, it's a continuous bridge pad between the 12 string and the six string as I think you can tell right here as we move across. And now we'll take a look at the bracing across the t rest of the guitar back to the tail block. 
I want to show you what we're doing down here on the back. Um, you know, we've got this crack here, and it's been, I've just been kind of letting it sit here in the shop to see what happened with the crack, and the crack doesn't seem to have moved any. Uh, one way or the other. I've measured it. I put two pieces of tape here where I'm measuring it and With my feeler gauge. I've got 14 thousandths in both of these cracks right here, and that's just about tight So what I thought I'd do because we're it's going to be sitting here in the shop for a while is I'm going to humidify the inside of the guitar just to see if you know people always say oh that'll close the crack up well I'm gonna try that so I've measured it we know we're at 14 thousandths right here we're gonna put some uh, humidity in this guitar and let's just see if the crack does go back together I have my doubts but I have seen it happen so we'll just see what happens with this one I kinda doubt this one's gonna do much because there's that bracing inside there's pretty heavy and I don't think you can't push that crack together I've already tried it doesn't move so you know it might go back together though it may swell the wood up enough that it sh shuts her you know closes her up and we'll just see what happens well, that's a short video. It's all I got right now, but uh, we haven't really made much progress yet on this guitar because, I, like I said, I just want to approach it slowly. Thanks for taking a look.